Senator Smith. Thank you, Deputy President. I move to take uh, note of answers to questions asked by all coalition senators today during question time. I think today we saw the early, fresh signs of hubris on the part of the government. And we saw it in two forms. We saw the dismissive nature in which Senator Watt pushed aside legitimate questions from Senator McKenzie into questions that are still unanswered in regards to the government's decision to deny Qatar Airways increased access to Australia, the benefit of which would come to Australian aviation consumers, to freight users and to many, many others. And then in the very, very last question, we saw Senator Farrell, the Minister for Trade, brush aside fresh revelations in regards to the government's decision to appoint its factionally preferred candidate for a very, very senior diplomatic and trade post in San Francisco. Their preferred factional candidate was the former Senator Chris Ketter over a professional diplomat, someone schooled and skilled in trade matters, who was in fact the preferred candidate through a merit process. Wow. You would have thought that given what had happened on the weekend, Australians overwhelmingly said that the government's preferred model in regards to constitutional recognition was wrong. And not just a little bit wrong, it was very, very wrong. Government starts the week trying to say to Australians, we've learned our lesson, we're going to focus on some other issues like cost of living, they say. But by Thursday afternoon, they are wearing the cloak of hubris. Not shyly, not hiding it in the cupboard. They are wearing it for the whole Australian Senate to see. Senator Watt's decision to brush away legitimate concerns about his ability to bring to the Senate estimates process next week answers to questions that officials refused to bring during the Qatar Senate inquiry process, and we saw Senator Farrell try to brush aside legitimate queries about proper due process in regards to the appointment of a senior trade position representing Australia's interests overseas to just brush it aside, mark this date, the beginning of Labor's decision to wash away, wash away the concerns of electors, wash away their concerns in regards to cost of living issues, deterioration, deterioration of the economy. Instead, they're wearing the cloak of hubris. So over the last few weeks, there have been some very, very important economic revelations which should be the focus of the government's attention now. Australians are already living with escalating cost of living challenges interest rate rises, inflation pressures. And while the country was thinking about its position in regards to Labor's preferred model for constitutional recognition of Australians, the OECD was saying that Australia is about to experience its second consecutive downgrade in regards to economic growth. Second consecutive downgrade. In addition to that, the OEC is out there saying that inflationary pressures are likely to be persistent in the Australian economy. And then we have the Reserve Bank of Australia in detailing its reasons for not increasing the cash rate on this occasion. Just recently, it has given Australians a very, very serious warning, and that is that the Labor Party is likely to deliver, because, of it, because it has not tackled inflation in our country, their Christmas gift to Australian families is likely to be another interest rate rise in November. And the RBA has said that members noted that inflation remained well above target and was expected to do so for some time. Services price inflation remained sticky and fuel prices were adding to headline inflation. At the same time, members observed that the Labor Party had reached a turn uh, the, the, the Labor market had reached a turning point and out 
output growth had slowed. The country is getting into perilous economic times, and today we Senator saw Labor's hubris.